Good morning. The December 13th meeting of the Board of Estimate is now called to order. In the interest of promoting the order and efficiencies of these hearings, persons who are disruptive to the hearing will be asked to leave the hearing room immediately. Meetings of the Board of Estimates are open to the public for the duration of the meeting. The hearing room must be vacated at the conclusion of the meeting. Failure to comply may result in a charge of trespassing. Madam Deputy Controller, are there any corrections, additions, or deferrals on the agenda? Good morning. For today's <coughs> agenda, the Board received a protest for pages 99 to 101, and those pages pertain to the 2018 loan authorization program. We have <coughs> the um, report from the Department of Planning, which is pages 99 to 100, and then the uh, report uh, from the Board of Finance, which is on page 101. Those items will be called together. The protests were received from Claire <coughs> Nezovitz, Amanda Manminski, Jennifer Kuntz, Rahula Stroll, Suchi Panda, who requested not to address the board, and Teresa Ruder. And those again have protested pages 99 to 100 and 101. Um, and those items 99 to 101 will move to the non routine agenda. <coughs> I have the following abstentions to report for today. The Honorable Mayor Pugh will abstain on page 38, item number eight. There are no abstentions for the Honorable President Young. The Honorable Comptroller Pratt will abstain on page 24, <coughs> page 25, pages 32 to 33, item two, page 103, item one, and page 103, item two. Mr. President, members of the board, those are the protests received today, as well as the <coughs> abstention that have been reported thus far. And again, the items that will be on the non-routine agenda are pages 99 to 100 and 101. Both items will be called together. Thank you. Thank you. I would direct the board members' attention to the memorandum from our office dated December the 11th, 2013, identifying matters to be considered as routine agenda items together with any corrections and additions that have been noted by the deputy controller. I will entertain a motion to approve all of the items contained on the routine agenda. Mr. President, I move to approve <coughs> those items on the routine agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay, the most current routine agenda has been adopted. The first item on the non-routine agenda can be found on pages 99 to 101, Department of Planning 2018 Loan Authorization Program, FY 2020-2021, General Obligation Bonds and Department of Finance, report of the 2018 loan authorization. Uh, we received six letters of protest, five of which uh, requested to speak. Um, I will call your names, and when I do so, please approach the podium, state your name, and begin your protest. You will have two minutes. Teresa Ruder. <coughs> Teresa. came here today because I understand. State name. your name. Oh, name. sorry. I am Teresa Reuter, and I came here today because I understand that the most important part of a city <coughs> is its uh, foundation, and the foundation of a city comes um, with, the, with the people who live here. And if the people who live here don't have adequate sustainable housing, our city can never be strong. That is why I ask that a majority of the monies for 2020 be given to sustainable and affordable housing. It's very, very important. Our children depend upon it. If they don't have a house to live in that is adequate and sheltering that they can come home to and feel safe in, they will not prosper in school, no matter what, how much money we put into the schools. So I ask you from the bottom of my heart and representing the children of Baltimore City that we give the lion's share of the money to housing for Baltimore City's residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Claire, is this Nesovic? Claire uh, Nesovic, she's uh, unable to make it today. Okay. Um, Amanda Maminsky? Amanda? Is she here? 
Okay, uh, Jennifer, uh, is this Kuntz? Kuntz. Kuntz. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, like Teresa, I'm here to ask. Your name? Yes. My, yes, yes. My name is Jennifer Kunzi. I'm a resident of Southwest Baltimore, and I'm here to ask that the demands for a 2020 vision and investment in Baltimore's communities be met. Um, our city is in crisis. We have people sleeping on the streets, including day, l nights like last night when the temperatures were in their 20s. We have children who don't have a safe place to lay their heads at night. We have de decrepit housing. Just a few months ago, a um, house fell apart onto the sidewalk a block from my house. These are all things that put people in real danger and are costing Baltimoreans their lives. The budget is a reflection of our values. It speaks to the things that we prioritize. It speaks to the things that we as a collective city are willing to put our collective investment of our tax dollars in. And Baltimoreans have been speaking loud and clear that we need to see a budget that reflects the values that we have of ensuring human rights, ensuring human dignity, and accommodating affordable housing for um, all Baltimoreans. And Mayor Pugh, you campaigned, I remember at a debate, you held up the 2020 vision and said that it was something you support. You came out to the United Not Bl Blighted rally in the spring and again said that it was something that you support. And we don't see that support translated into this budget where there was a large increase, but almost none of that increase went to affordable housing. And we want to see more of an investment from the city and the things that matter most to Baltimoreans. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rahula Stroll. Good morning, my name is Rahula Stroll. I'm a resident of uh, <clears throat> the University of Maryland neighborhood of Baltimore. Um, and uh, first I wanted to thank you, Mayor Pugh, for your support for the uh, 2020 vision for affordable housing in Baltimore. Uh, so far, and I would like to encourage you and President Young and the rest of the Board of Estimates to reflect that support in when the budget gets written. Uh, half of the 20 in 2020 is for affordable housing uh, so people can own a home, have a consistent place to put their head every night and not be put out um, if the neighborhood starts to see improvement. Um, as a former teacher and advocate for educational equity, housing stability is of paramount importance to helping Baltimore City schools improve and create beneficial communities for Baltimore children. When students suffer housing instability, they move schools, have no consistent place to store their belongings, and spend time packing and moving when other children spend that time doing homework, growing through play with their neighbors, and building community. While good schools can anchor a good community, even the best school in the world couldn't anchor a community ridden with vacant houses and transient populations. Community is at the heart of a successful school, and if a community is suffering from blight and foreclosure, schools cannot thrive. Maslow's hierarchy of needs states plainly, cycle, physiological needs need to be taken care of, and if they are ignored, they are ignored at the expense of all other needs. If a child does not have a place to lay their head, there is no school that can solve that problem. If we invest in the people of Baltimore to the 2020 vision, uh, those investments will return. They will return in the form of better schools. They will return in the form of retaining population rather than losing population. Um, you will see those returns not only in, uh, in, in social improvement and emotional improvement of Baltimore City's residents, but in economic improvement because the tax base will remain instead of vacating the premises. Affordable housing needs $20 million annually, uh, not the $5 million annually that's currently allocated, uh, to create this radical vision of stable communities. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Braverman. <coughs> State your name. Michael Braverman, Housing Commissioner, Baltimore City. Uh, good morning, Madam Mayor, Council President, members of the board. I'm here with Tom Stoser. Our good morning, uh, Tom Stoser, Planning Director, and we're the agency that puts together the capital budget, including the loan authorization program, in close partnership with Department of Finance, the agencies, and the administration. We're, we're here only to, um, to ask that you um, approve the item 
It's uh, we are in two in 2018. We have a first allocation of three million in affordable housing bond funds. And, um, and this item raises that to $5 million in 2020. It's a step in the right direction. We'd ask that you approve it. I'm looking forward to working with the folks here at the Housing Roundtable and all of our committed partners. Baltimore is blessed with a tremendous uh, number of committed partners in the advocacy community and the development community to figure out the best way to meet these needs. We have our council already actively working on ways to additional ways to fund affordable housing. Um, and. I think there's many different parts of the solution. We wish, of course, that the federal government would provide the funds that we know that we need. We know that's not going to happen, so we're going to have to work together. The last thing I want to say is I want to thank the council. I want to thank the board because this board also approved uh, a deconstruction contract that is also part of the 2020 plan, which is to deconstruct houses in Baltimore City. And Baltimore has the state-of-the-art deconstruction program in the city, in the country right now. So I just wanted to highlight that to the board. Um, Madam Mayor? Yeah, can you, uh, t the Perkins project is how much in affordable housing? The, um, the, the, the Perkins project refers to our um, family sites. Uh, we have a Choice Neighborhoods application into HUD that will redevelop Perkins Homes, which has about 679 units of, um, of housing authority properties. That is deeply affordable property in Baltimore City. And that will, every one of those will get rebuilt as part of a mixed income community in addition to um, affordable housing at 50%. So there'll be uh, more than 1,000 units built there. In the Poppleton project. And in Poppleton, we have probably 1,500 units, 20% uh, of which will be affordable as that project gets built out. Okay. And the total cost? Um, the uh, total cost for all of that? Mm -hmm. Well, Madam Mayor, the, the Perkins project, you know, the total redevelopment there will be, you know, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars okay. and, and, uh, and 70 million probably for phase one at Poppleton. Um, and just, Madam Mayor, to the point, I mean, our, our affordable housing spending, clearly, clearly we're not meeting the need. We wouldn't have you know, our advocates here today if there wasn't a need. So we're not meeting the need, that's clear, but, but we're spending probably as a city, um, in this city every year, spending or leveraging close to 40 million a year for affordable housing. And affordable housing is, is again, broadly defined. It's not just building new affordable housing. It's preserving existing affordable housing, and it's keeping seniors in their homes. There are cost burden seniors all around the city that if they can't stay in their homes, we're going we're gonna to add to that problem. So our, our programs and activities cover are inclusive of activities like that. And I just want to add that I added an additional $4 million. Am I correct? <laughs> Yeah, at the Board of Finance for affordable housing because it was six million before right. I added and the four and million. And we're looking forward to, <coughs> to meeting with everyone in that community to figure out the most effective ways to use that money. Thank you. And plus, um, to add to that, um, I know that I see a lot of, um, um, you know, refinancing of mm -hmm. uh, senior apartments and affordable housing units to restructure the loan so that people can actually stay in their homes. So uh, while we um, can should be doing more you know we're going to try to do as much as we can um that the budget allow us to do mm -hmm. um i know that we have the consent decree that we have to um you know fund um and other things that we have to fund and it's not to say that um affordable houses is, is not a priority it's been a priority of mine since i've been on this council um you know i did the affordable housing uh, bill which was a strong bill until it was weakened by the mayor and the commissioner at that time so uh, we have a task force that's going to be created to look at affordable housing, um, and we're going to work closely with the administration to try to make that a reality so we can meet some of these benchmarks that the advocates are advocating for, because we all realize that um, we need more and more affordable housing. So I uh, thank you all. I entertain a motion. Mr. President, the uh, timely protests having been filed and considered and those protesting having been heard, I move that the protest be denied and rejected. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. All right. This item has been approved. 
There have been no more business before this board. We recess until bid opening at 12 noon. Thank you. Thanks. Good afternoon. The Board of Essence is now in session for the receiving and opening of bids. We have two addenda for today. <coughs> GS 16816, Mitchell Courthouse Elevator Upgrade. Please change the bid due date from December 13th, 2017 to January 10th, 2018. B5000-5166, provide emergency medical supplies. Please change the bid due date from December 13th excuse me, 2017 to January 10th, 2018. Those are the addenda for today. Okay, hearing no objections, so ordered. SC 930R, Clinton Street Sewerage System Improvements. A bid bond is required if the amount is over $100,000. Spinello Companies with a bid bond. H 
Northeast Remsco Construction Inc. with a bid bond. Twelve million seven hundred eighty six thousand five hundred eighty five dollars. And that's with the bid bond. J Contracting Company Inc. with a bid bond. Twelve million seven hundred sixty eight thousand dollars. Metra Industries with a bid bond. Fourteen million eight hundred fifty six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. These will be referred to the Department of Public Works for tabulation and reporting back. B five zero zero zero. Five one eight three pneumatic tire forklifts. A bid bond of five percent is required. Maryland Industrial Trucks Inc. subject to verification of bid bond. 62,910 dollars. Is there a bid bond? Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Sometimes 
<coughs> see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Let me see if, if there are more. There may be a lot. Atlantic Lift Truck Inc. Subject to verification of bid bond with the Department of Finance. $64,070. I think we have another one up here. So let me reach together. Um, I didn't see it, but, uh, but you can look behind me to see if you see one. I think it's not that way, that page. Eastern Lift Truck, subject to verification of bid bond with the Department of Finance, $68,268.20. Okay, so these will be referred to purchasing for tabulation and reporting back. Right. There being no further business, we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>